Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now did you ever go over the top on a project that really didn't require as much attention as you gave it, only to be somewhat pleased unexpectedly by the end result? Well, that's exactly what's happened here. So, some of you may remember this from a few days ago. This is the Dell Optiplex system that cost me 25 British pence on eBay. I got a very good deal on it despite its ageing specs. But today, I finally finished making a few modifications to it. I'm going to talk you through what I've done, then we're going to switch it on and see what it can do in its current Frankenstein's monster style state. Now I wouldn't recommend anyone putting as much time into something that really doesn't have that much of an upgrade potential, if any, but I couldn't resist modifying this just a little bit. The first thing I did was uh, do away with the stock heatsink, replacing it with this Arctic Freezer 7 Pro. Because of the odd Dell exclusive motherboard connector, I had to reuse the blower style fan, so it's not too much quieter but it's a lot cooler. The fan and heatsink is now an all-in-one custom contraption that I had to modify to fit, and while it's probably not coming out of there easily, I did buy a couple of spares so that if any of you want to see how I did it, I can make a future video on the subject. Don't expect the lid to close now though, I've also quadrupled the memory from 1GB to 4GB, the maximum supported amount, to hopefully speed the system up a little bit. Though the Pentium 4 will likely still hold us back, and given that this machine only supports 32-bit P4 processors and no Core 2 duos, this CPU upgrade path is pretty non-existent. The stock 180 watt PSU is also unique to this machine, but luckily with the processor limitation, even a low power card would work well with it. So I opted for the Radeon HD 6450 Passive Edition, a card that you could probably power with a couple of copper wires and a bag of potatoes. Seriously though, it idles at just a few watts and peaks at around 30, so it wouldn't put much strain on our OEM power supply. I also added my cheap Chinese SSD to the equation, though as I'll explain later on, this option didn't last long. So, with these somewhat ridiculous mods made, it was time to fire it up. The first thing to do was to ensure that the new RAM along with the processor was detected after fiddling around in the case, and looking back on it now, I failed to realise that this 32-bit CPU, with its 32-bit operating system, would only recognise up to 3GB of DDR2. Also, while the SSD was detected, it refused to work as a primary drive no matter the settings, and the capacity is a little small anyway, so I swapped that back out for a slightly larger 160GB hard disk drive. After that I installed a fresh copy of 32-bit Windows 7, hoping to see a speed difference over XP, and to be honest I did. Having given this thing a thorough testing in the previous video though, I decided to make today about one thing, gaming. And with that, I ran AMD's Auto Detect software, installed all the latest device drivers, and jumped into some games to see if this Pentium 4 HD6450 system could, well, do anything. To my surprise, I found that even 2013's Bioshock Infinite ran at 30 frames per second with the lowest settings and 800x600 resolution. I played through the first level, though when I got to Columbia, the city in the sky, I did see a few performance hiccups. Even running the Far Cry 2 benchmark at low settings and 720p resolution, and I was shocked to see a near steady 30 frames per second once again. The CPU will always be a bottleneck even with a 6450, but with Far Cry 2 being one of my favourites, I was happy to see this result. Even Grand Theft Farmer, or Farming Simulator 17, managed to chug along with anywhere from 15 to 30 frames per second, at 800 by 600 and as I recklessly took to the roads in my finance pickup truck mowing down my competitors crops, the frame rate stayed somewhat steady. It's not perfect by any sense of the word, but it is running. I actually had more trouble with older games except Portal which did run perfectly. Portal runs really well on most hardware in my experience, so it was nice to see that that theme continued, though other titles, ones that run well on the integrated GMA graphics, grinded to a halt with significant freezes from the likes of GTA Vice City, Morrowind and Mafia. All in all though, I shouldn't think many Optiplexes have been through what this one has. Does it make a decent budget gaming machine? Absolutely not. Is it convenient under the desk pocket change priced PC? 
Well, uh, it was, but one thing it certainly did do was give me a huge amount of joy, and I couldn't think of much else that I could do the same for with 25p. If you fancy yourself a fun and downright silly project, have a little bit of cash to play with in a free weekend, then why not pick one of these up and make some modifications for yourselves as well? So there we have it. The 25 pence or 30 cents Optiplex has reached its final form. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like on it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully, I'll see all of you in the next one.